In this video, I'm going to show you two incredible ways to level up a classic effect in card magic. These are some next level routines. You're going to be blowing everyone's mind with this. They are fooling, deceptive, unique, but you got to have some sleight of hand chops because they are a little tricky. So let's check out a quick performance of these routines. So for this, we need the two aces and a selected card. We'll use the jack of clubs. So first we'll take that ace of clubs and we'll lose it somewhere in the middle of the deck. Then we'll take the Ace of Spades and we'll leave that somewhere in the middle of the deck. Now you've often seen the trick where you take a card and you put it in the deck and magically the two aces find the card and you would say sandwich the card. But in this we're going to try something a bit different. We're going to try to get the selection to actually find the sandwich. So if I just bring my hand over top like this, you can see it. And if I just tap, incredibly the sandwich appears around the selection. And of course, it is the two aces. So for this trick we're going to use these two aces and I want you to see that there is nothing in between those aces as I square them up on the table right there. Now this can be a shuffle deck shuffled by the spectator and you're just going to have them cut to wherever they'd like and this will be the card. So in this case it'll be the ten of clubs. Now instantly with no funny moves you're going to snap and their selected card, their thought of card that they don't even have to ever say out loud is completely vanished from the deck. If you look, there's no 10 of clubs here, no 10 of clubs here, no 10 of clubs here, none 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 here. And incredibly now in between those two aces, watch. I never said it would appear between these aces. If you look from the start, there's been some cards off to the side. And they're not just any cards. They are of course one and two aces with one card in between. And it is of course your ten of clubs. What is good guys, it is Reed and welcome back to another video. I got an incredible tutorial today for you guys. We're gonna be looking at two incredible sandwich routines that are gonna take your sandwich effects to the next level. If you guys would like some one-on-one -on -one help with anything you see here or anything at all, or you'd like to learn some of my best effects directly one-on-one -on -one from me, you can check out a private lesson at the link in the description. Or if you would like to learn over 200 mentalism routines that are to come mixed with some of my best mentalism effects and most closely guarded secrets, you can check out my mentalism membership in the description or join up here. You'll get access to the entire library of mentalism tutorials and extra videos every single month. With all that said guys, let's get right in to the tutorial. All right guys, so let's get into the breakdowns. So these are two little sandwich routines that are really, really unique that come from the slide off season two, episode two. This was a sandwich routine that I had to create using a triple lift, a Cardini change and the bluff dribble pass. Now I've already taught part one of that whole routine. It's a long routine. There are five or so phases. These are the last two phases that I use and they make really unique individual sandwich pieces or they combine well into a nice little routine. So I broke this down into part two. You can go check out part one where I taught the first three incredible quick hitting sandwich routines and they're actually the ones that use the slights that I had to. So these routines actually don't use any of the slights that I was given in the slide off if you're familiar with the format of the slide off. And if you'd like to check out the original slide off video, I will link it here. Slide off is a unique series where I compete with other magicians creating unique effects with slights given by the other magician. Again, with these slide off tutorials, I often will change things up to try to make it a bit more practical and usable now that I'm not given the limitations of the slide off. Now this first one I think is really good for video, but it also can be used in practice on real people. It's a really unique premise and that's what I love about it. It's the idea of the sandwich appearing around the selection rather than the selection appearing in between the sandwich. It's a little bit knacky, a little bit angly, but it's a lot of fun. So this first routine, what you're gonna need is to have the two aces set up on top of the deck. Now in the original slide off, I had the two aces already in play as well as the selection. And I collected them in this order with the selection on the bottom and got a break under two cards. I then used the Browie addition to add two cards on top of the aces and set the selection back down to get the aces in the third and fourth position. Then I proceeded to do some triple lifts. So I did a triple lift 
and said I'll leave that ace there. And I did another triple lift and I said I'll leave that ace there and that kept the two aces on top of the deck. What I would recommend if you're actually gonna perform this is just start with the two aces on top of the deck and don't bring them into play. And you'll have a break under those two aces, a pinky break. If you need help on the pinky break, I have taught that in depth up here. So of course you would have had your card selected before you get your break, so have a card selected, then get your pinky break, and you will casually set that card on top of the deck and then casually lift up at the break as you are explaining the premise of this effect, which is normally, you know, magicians will do this thing where they have two aces and they find a selected card, but I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna try to make those aces appear around your card. Now, while you do this, you're gonna take this in Biddle Grip and you're gonna steal off that back ace. So right now you have the two aces underneath the card. So you're gonna pull it down while pulling this over, okay? And from the top, it looks like this. Now you're gonna grab this lengthwise with your left hand, move it out of the way while the thumb comes down, and that card gets stolen into a Tenkai Palm. I have an in-depth tutorial on the Tenkai Palm if you'd like to learn that. So I come here and I lift, and I keep that in a Tenkai Palm. Now, your angle, this back of hand should be pointing at the camera, so you wanna be slightly off this way when you perform this particular routine. Next, you're gonna be holding this now in a mechanics grip, and you're gonna to need to re-grip, so you're gonna use your middle finger to keep that card in Tenkai Palm while the thumb and the index grab the card at the corners so that you can re-grip with the thumb and index at this corner holding tightly. You also may want to tilt down slightly in case your cards are a bit older and they start to warp and, and reveal that. If you tilt down so this is at the eye line, it'll help hide that. Now you're going to bring your hand over top and put the corner of this card underneath that thumb like this. That's hidden, right? So this goes right underneath and then you lift out of view. So you get this nice convincer and you can pretty much open all of your fingers except maybe these last two. You might even be able to get it with one finger to look pretty great. So you can do something like that and then you're gonna smack the table and as you do that, this card comes down and you're gonna use the middle finger and thumb to push apart and spread that last card. And you get this really beautiful illusion that looks something like this and it looks like the sandwich just appears around that selection, and it is truly, truly beautiful. Again, if you're doing this in person, I would be a bit more cautious of your angles. You know, with the Tenkai, I would probably keep the hand closed as I do that. It still looks really good when you do it that way, but on camera, you might be able to, like I said, get away with almost doing it with one or two fingers and kind of keeping that card out of view. I can't tell, I think that's, I think that's almost all out of view like this and then you come down and that looks really, really clean. So it's a great visual piece of magic. Pretty knacky, but really, really cool and fun to perform. Now the second phase I used very differently in the slide off routine. And I think the ultimate way to use this is the way I did it. It's just not super practical, but it would be to actually have two slices of bread with a selection in between the slices of bread because the whole time you're doing the sandwich routine, it's the perfect closer. Their selected card appears inside a sandwich. I imagine, you know, you're at a restaurant and someone has a sandwich, you could like, you know, put a card in there. If you're at home and you have a loaf of bread, you could put it in between. It's a funny thing, but it's a great idea. But ultimately the concept here is still really strong and you can use the concept without the whole loaf of bread gimmick. So basically what it allows you to do is do a forced sandwich routine where you're forcing a card so you know the outcome. So you can do predictions, you can do different kind of setups to have the card appear in different places. So I like to do the sort of, look, I'm gonna put the aces down and they expect it to appear between the aces, but it appears somewhere else. So there's a lot of different ideas with this, but I think the method is what really is neat here. So there's two methods. In the slide off, I used a method called structure by Ollie Meeling, which allows you to do a duplicate without a duplicate. So you can have them believe they see a certain card, but it's actually not even in the deck. So when they look through it later, it's vanished. I'm not gonna teach that here. You can go learn that from Ollie, but I have two methods for you. One would be doing this with a gimmick where you would just have a misprinted pipped card and you could just go through and stop force that misprinted pip. They'll remember the pip. And then now when you flip the deck and spread it this way and they look for their card, it'll look like it's vanished. The other method is to simply do it using the auto index, which I have taught in a ton of detail in this video, the auto index vanish combined with a duplicate. So you'll have your duplicate. In this case, I use the 10 of clubs and you're gonna set this duplicate wherever you'd like it to appear. It's now gone from a sandwich routine to kind of an impossible location. But one idea that I like to do is take out the two red aces and have them in view, but not obviously, like kind of off to the side, 
out of view and just look like one card. Now you go through and you bring attention. You can even let them set those aces and square them up off to the side. Then you're gonna go through and perform your favorite force to get the 10 of clubs forced. So you might do the bluff dribble force, which I've also taught in a ton of detail. The duplicate starts on top and you get a big thumb break. They call stop anywhere you'd like and you show them that selection and then leave it back in the middle of the deck. Not only have you forced the top card, but you've also controlled it to the top. So how that works, you get a break and you just drop at the break wherever they say. You're gonna use your fingers at the front to cover that edge and your thumb to cover the back edge. And when you just show it like this, they can't tell how many cards there are. You also leave the cards a bit scattered in this hand, so they don't have a good idea about how many cards are left in this hand, but you quickly show them that card. They get it as you come back over top. You're gonna to use the thumb to kick up this packet grab everything and then draw attention to what they think is their card and say watch as I leave it buried in the middle. So I think that's a perfect control and force for this particular effect because now you can do the auto index vanish without any of the work because the card's already on top. If you did another force like I did in the performance where the card ends up in the middle then you would just go through the auto index vanish where you can make any card vanish and you're just looking for that particular card. So if you need a tutorial on that, you can go check out my previous tutorial to learn how to do that. But if for this method and doing it this way with the bluff dribble force, it's gonna be very easy. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna snap and say, just like that, your card has vanished from the deck. You do that instantly right after the control and the force. Then you go through and you're showing them. As you get near the ending, you can go nice and slow. When you have about 10 cards left, you're gonna just pull this card in just slightly, just like a call basically. And then you continue spreading and just point down a little bit so you don't flash this. And now you can come to the end and get this clean display where it looks like you've shown every single card and you just slide that back underneath, putting it on top. You can go through again if you'd like. You could at this point palm it off and ditch the card and let them go through it thoroughly themselves. Lots of different options here. You could even forget that initial display and just palm it off right away with a one-handed top palm, which I've also taught up here. If you wanna palm it and set the deck down while well, you go to your pocket and now they can go through and look for the card which has vanished. Then you pretend like the card's gonna appear between the aces and then you could go with a magician in trouble type plot where it seems like it didn't work and the card's gone. And then of course you move to your impossible location and the card could be somewhere else. Bonus points if you can you know, get the card on them in their pocket, in their purse. But if you're doing it this way, then you can say, well, I didn't say which aces it would appear between. I just said it would appear between the aces. And over here, there's been some cards this whole time. We've actually had the aces and there's one card in between them. I went nowhere near them and it's the 10 of clubs. So lots of different ideas with this effect and different ways that you can take it. And I think that it is absolutely incredible. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Now, if you guys would like to combine this effect with an absolute killer, go check out this incredible tutorial up here. I guarantee you can fool any magician with this trick. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. As always, if you'd like to check out some private lessons and get some help one-on-one -on -one with whatever it is, you can sign up at the link in the description. Or if you'd like to join the best mentalism membership on YouTube, you can also join that in the description. With all that said, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.